Yo, what up guys, Marin here. And I'm Jungle Fiverr. Yeah. And this is Strictly Better MTG, and he uploaded a video on the top 10 Ravnica Allegiance sleepers. So what are we doing with those sleepers? Uh, we're going to take all of those sleepers, we're going to stick them into a randomizer, uh, we're going to generate one card for each person, and then we're going to build a deck around that card. Yep, it is going to be a brew off, and we're not going to know the other one's perspective, so it's going to be a surprise to both of us. So if you wanted to see each of our hands and our individual deck techs, you can check them out on both of our channels. And we're probably going to do one of these again, so if you want to see this again, then please subscribe to both of our channels. So let's get right into the randomizer. Hope you enjoy. All right, here we are on random.org, and this is the way it works. We enter a bunch of random sections into this box here. We press randomize, and it spits them out into a random order. So whichever one comes up on top is going to be our winner. So let's go back and enter all our Ravnica Allegiance sleepers and see which one we have to brew a deck around. All right, our Ravnica Allegiance sleepers are entered in. So I don't get to see Jungle Fiber's part. He doesn't get to see mine. So we have to brew our decks, and it's going to be a surprise to both of us. So let's hit that randomize button and see which one we get. Mesmerizing Benthid. We have to brew a deck around Mesmerizing Benthid. This is going to be interesting. All right, see you in a moment. All right, guys, so this is how the deck turned out. It's kind of weird, but it turned out pretty awesome, and I am pretty proud of it. Um, so it, it took a long time to think about what I was going to do with Mesmerizing Benthid. Uh, there was so many ideas that come to mind, but this is the one that I thought worked out the best. It is very janky, yet awesome. So it is a four-color midrange deck, green, white, red, blue. So the idea is to get down Panharmonicon. I mean, you don't need Panharmonicon, but it really helps a lot, so it doubles up our triggers on things like Wall of Omens and Carving Caryata to draw a bunch of cards, Reflector Mage to bounce some things, uh, Mesmerizing Benthid will enter with double triggers, and then I have the red splash for Perforos, God of the Forge, so whenever a creature enters, we deal two damage to our opponent. Um, but that will double up with Panharmonicon and deal four damage to our opponent, so with the, um, the Octopus, that is a lot of damage. And then the second part of this deck is we have bounce effects like Venzer and Conjurer's Closet, so that we can go to the end step and bounce our dudes and get more ETB trigger value. We're going to draw so many cards between our Panamonicon with their walls and then just eventually find our Perforos and our Octopus and just go to town throwing damage at our opponent's face. So that's the idea of the deck. The sideboard is meant for the general basis of the top 10 because I don't know what he got. So Gaia's Blessing's in there to make sure we don't get milled out if our opponent is playing mill or if jungle fibers playing mill uh and then we got things like knight of autumn just naturalized just in case his deck's built around like an like an artifact or enchantment um and then like de deputy detention just to exile permanence negate if he got like a control or combo based um sleeper so yeah pretty normal so let's get right into it okay i'm excited this is going to be <laughs> wild i've got no idea what to expect so this deck came out actually pretty sweet. Excellent. Well, yeah, so uh, let's just explain. Uh, yeah, so we are playing uh, Brew Off in Modern. We've both picked uh, deck cards um, from the Strictly Better MTG's top 10 underrated cards of Ravnica Allegiance uh, by randomness. Um, so we built our deck last week. Uh, we got a pretty sweet card. Um, I don't know what meryn has got. Meryn doesn't know what I've got. Unless she's watching out my stream. No, I'm not. Know what <laughs> I, I closed your stream. I'm on my stream now. Awesome. And uh, yeah, my stream my stream is up and running. So people will come in and see the jank in my opening hand and be like, what the heck is going on? Yeah, um, please make sure people don't don't spoil it. We, we, we'll we find out. We'll find out very soon what we're playing. Uh, I've won the dice roll, so I'm going to play first. Seems Ooh. pretty reasonable. Um, yeah. This hand is... Bad. This hand is fine. Yeah. I'm gonna keep this. I'm gonna mulligan. <laughs> she has cards. Be careful. Well, so zero you get you get London. You get London mulligan. So it's not too bad. We do get London mulligan. That is, and this is actually pretty good for us. Uh, I'm gonna keep this hand. I think we're gonna put this one to the bottom. Okay. The one thing I think that MTGO should fix is that. Um, it doesn't tell me on my screen that you mold to six. Like it still says seven the entire time until you decide to keep. So that, like, I don't, I don't get to alter my decision based on if you mold or not. Yeah, it's a bit weird. I think uh, they probably coded it really quickly. 
So, yeah. All right, good. So we play Shambling Vent. We've got Noble Hierarch on the other side. Uh, so we're definitely not playing the same things. That's All right, good. so Black White. Interesting. Yeah. So I'm, I'm immediately oh. thinking Awaken the Erstwhile. <laughs> <laughs> Mere Servitor. <laughs> okay. Yeah, play another Shambling Vent. Pass the term. All right, let's Noble go. Hierarch. Once I peeve, crack it for a hollowed fountain. Shocked. And I'm going with Carbon Caryatid. Ooh, Carbon Caryatid. I love Carbon Caryatid. Such a good card. Well, our turns are not looking particularly great so far, but we'll pass the turn. Okay. Off to a very different levels of star here. Wow, okay. Shock. Four colors. Four colors. Pan Harmonicon. <laughs> Nice. Love it. <laughs> Here we go. Oh dear, we are so dead. Okay, okay. So, play Swamp. Play a... Sorin. Okay, it's 100%. I know what it is. It's 100% Ethereal Absolution. It is 100% Ethereal Absolution. Yes. Oh, it's... it's yeah, it's an interesting one to build around, put it that way. It's um, six mana enchantment. Uh, it's it it was a pain to build around. <laughs> I mean, Especially it's just a, a lord a lord effect. Oh no, if you have it, you're gonna wipe out all my birds, all my mana darks. <laughs> uh, if I yeah, I I would like to have some sort of wiping effect. That'd be that'd be great. Uh, we uh, do we have some? We might we might in our deck. Who knows? I would like to say hello to everybody who is in my chat. Jim Miles from Jungle Fiber Stream, what's up? Master Noob and Angel, welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, let's let's emblem. Should we emblem here? That does feel like a good plan. I got hey, blockers for here. days. You do have blockers for days. That is that is true. Uh, so attacking is still not a great plan, but. Do we want to attack with this? No, because two carbon caryatids is bigger than all of that stuff. So, I think we are just unfortunately passing. Thrilling, thrilling turn so far. Okay, I'm looking for something very specific here. Let's do this. Top five. Ooh, incubation. Nice. There it is. I found it. Get it out there. Oh, you got Mesmerizing Benthid. Mesmerizing oh, Benthid is what I got. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's okay. double it up. Mesmerizing Benthid. But you don't see the other part of the combo yet. The other part of the combo is in my hand. Oh, no. I hope you don't thought seize me. the Battlefield creates two zero two blue illusion creature tokens. And yeah, hexproof as long as you control an illusion. Uh, if the other part of the combo is Phantasmal Image, I'd be very impressed. Well, I might as well cast okay. another another incubation. Oh, let's take another one, sure. Pass turn. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay, all right, all right. Yeah, this could be a problem. Ah, uh, this could definitely be a problem. All right, well, we're gonna we're gonna make a Sorin token. A bit more, a few more vampires. Always good. Probably just play a. Let me play another shambling vent. Now, hmm. ethereal yeah. absolution just barely doesn't shut down my illusion tokens. <laughs> just about, yeah. It, it's really good for me, but it's yeah. At the moment, I'm slightly worried. Very, All right. very worried. I'm excited. <laughs> God, oh, I don't want to know what's coming. All right, All right. here we go. Perforos, God of the Forge. We oh, still actually need uh, one more Wombo combo. Uh, we're looking what? for it. Let's go with another yeah, Carvin. That is a Perforos. Oh, and it triggers twice. Oh, geez, from the Panamonicon. Yep. <laughs> double cards. Double, double ping. Yep. Yep. Oh, come on, deck. I need something. Uh, <laughs> might as well throw in another Noble. It's going to die anyways. So one thing, one thing to say here is that there is actually no budget. Um, we decided up front that there was going to be no budget. Um, so for me, I was just trying to make something cool. Um, and yes, it did turn out budget in, in the end in, in general. So just want to say that out there. It's, it, 
there, there is, you know, there's no unfairness here. We all agree to the well. We we agree to our terms up front. So just to, just to throw it out there. Yeah. Besides my um, land base, my deck is relatively cheap, except nobles. Say, uh, yeah, noble hierarchs of it, but, but I mean, noble hierarchs are just modern. If you're playing green, I mean, I don't own any, but um, yeah, I mean, they're, they're just standard in in uh, in modern. So there's no there's no no worry about that. Let's let's get down. Let's get down this card. Elspeth Sun's okay. That's terrifying. <laughs> With Ethereal. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I mean, we are oh, are we just ticking up here to stop the mesmerizing benthid? Alright, well you yeah. know I have another mesmerizing benthid in hand, and that's ten damage to the face. That is a large amount of damage, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's not a lot I can do about that, apart from say tack for damage with vampires yeah all right why not we'll throw them away if you're gonna be perforating me in the face i mean there's not a lot i can do about that just gain some life with sword all right that is not the wombo combo i needed but this will do for now yep that's a lot of damage that oh wait, that is lethal. Actually, I was gonna say that's super lethal. Yeah, each each one's a double trigger. Each one's a double trigger. I forgot that. All right, cool. On the okay. side, wording. Yeah. Right. Okay. So fine. Mesmerizing Benthid. How do we deal with mesmerizing Benthid at home? Ah, that is an interesting question. I. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know if oh. I should prepare for Ethereal Absolution or if I just don't care. You probably don't care, <laughs> not, not not at the speed of our deck. Um, I mean, we, there are things that we can bring in. I mean, I'm going to be probably bringing in these. Probably going down these. I think and... this is good. I think I don't need this card. Is probably not worth it. Um, these are. Uh, that feels oh. really bad. Removal spells in general feel bad against tokens. Yeah, yeah. I think I think you're right. I mean, for me, it's a lot of a little bit easier because obviously Mesmerizing Benthid is kind of a big target, so I can just um, path it. But it's the it's going to be Perforos. Can I deal with Perforos? I think the answer is possibly no. Oh no, I know. Exactly what I so I, I found I wanted to make a Mesmerizing Benthid deck where Mesmerizing Benthid would be the perfect card rather than any other card that exists, and it it is because Mesmerizing Benthid actually has hexproof if I control those illusions. Yes. So you can't really remove it, so yeah, it just protects my combo. Oh yeah, that's really good. <laughs> so I've, I've done Mesmerizing Benthid before with... Um, oh, it, was, it was Phantasmal Image, where it essentially... Yeah, it, because it's, it's, it makes it an illusion itself, it, it has... Um, it just gets by hex, it gets hexproof by default, which I think is really cool. Um, yeah, that's I love literally the only the only reason for it. I love doing that back in the day with uh, Lord of the Unreal Illusions Tribal, just giving the Phantasm of the Shroud. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That that's that sort of thing. Uh, we unfortunately I have to mulligan this hand because it does not look good, but this this looks fine. This one doesn't have enough colors, but I think I can draw into them because of my draw spells. I have to put a card on the bottom. I will go with this one. Start off with the Shambling Vents, and yeah, we'll pass the turn. That's like your fourth Shambling Vent you played. <laughs> Can't go wrong with Shambling Vents. Okay, that's, that's a good dude. I wanted to see that in the last game, but I didn't see it. All right, play Godless Shrine, pass the turn. All so right. yeah, the sideboard the sideboard for us is kind of ridiculous. Um, I think the the main deck is is about six tickets, and uh, the the sideboard is about seventy or eighty. So it's it's <laughs> as, as is always the way in modern. So. For this deck, if you budgetize the land base and you replace noble hierarchs on the main board, this deck is like nothing. It's it's literally just a couple ticks. Nice, nice. All right, so. Uh, We'll play Lingering Souls. Okay. I have some thoughts. I do like Lingering Souls. Um, 
just from people in my chat, so my build around, build around card was uh, Ethereal Absolution, uh, which is a six mana enchantment from Ravnica Allegiance, um, which gives all of our creatures plus one plus one and all of uh, the opponent's creatures negative one, negative one. Also has an irrelevant ability to exile uh, cards from your opponent's graveyard, which I have used to great effect in, uh, in draft. It's, I think I, I played literally, I've only played it in Limited once, and uh, but Ethereal Absolution is such a powerhouse in, yeah, in Limited. I love that card. I played in Commander, and the other day I played during a, um, I went to my LGS and played like five or six games of Commander, and Ethereal Absolution shut down like four players, like completely, because <laughs> there's a lot, there's a lot of tokens being made in, in Commander, so that... That card is just a powerhouse. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And then, like, I had Xur the Enchanter, so when I played Ethereal Absolution, I uh, used, I attacked with Xur and fetched a copy enchantment, and I copied Ethereal Absolution. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Oh, there's Panamonicon. Here we go, boys. No. <laughs> no. No fun, please. <laughs> no, no fun allowed here. Oh no, a three, th a four, four flying soldier. Oh, they're all flying. Uh, they're all flying. Okay, that's that's terrifying. I think I'm gonna have to just do this now. Ooh, okay. That's not too bad for us. All right, let's uh, incubation. Right. Go digging. Oh man, I whiffed. Ooh. Thank goodness. <laughs> okay, I might just be beaten down by Lingering Souls here. That would be great. That would be very good for us. Uh, I I did have a card I was going to play, but um, I mean, when when you draw an Ethereal Absolution, you just play Ethereal Absolution. There it is. All right. I yeah, I think I think you got this one. I think I'm a little bit too slow. Oh wait, I do have a Saving Grace here. Yeah, this this might actually save me. Let's go with Venzer the Sojourner, bouncing our deputy of detention, um, and ending the turn. Uh, deputy comes back in and will exile the spirit tokens. I That'll might, do. I might That'll be do. okay for a bit. I don't know how I'm gonna bounce back against that flashed back lingering souls, but we'll see. I mean, I will probably just make this flying and try and attack you for five. Oh yeah, <laughs> that'll do it. All right, I scoop. <laughs> Awesome, one and one. Good. Well, at least we've got like semi-balanced decks. That seems that seems pretty good. I'm just gonna All run right. it right back. Yeah, same. All right, but I'm on the play finally. So Venzer is what I wanted to keep bouncing the the Benthid. Oh, that'd be so good. Yeah, no, I like that. So I call this deck Octo Bounce. That's what I named it. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I'm keeping seven, so that seems seems good. And Noble Hierarch is yeah, pretty standard. Lead off on Shambling Vent. Alright, I think I got my optimal curve here, so I'm happy. Yeah, that looks pretty good so far. Uh we're gonna go with Myria. Alright, Gavini. Let's throw out Panharmonicon. See if you can deal with it. Nope. <laughs> awesome. Not right now. Not right now. Yeah, you know, I might just top deck something. That'd be great. But I don't. So I won't. Alright. Let's go with uh, a card that I've been wanting to play in Commander but never have. Conjurer's Closet. Ooh, so at the end step spicy. we get to we get to bounce something. And with Panharmonicon we get to keep bouncing Carve and Carry Added. And drawing two cards per end step. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Can't can't argue with that. Ooh, cards. Okay. Yo, Master Noob in my chat sent me a deck list and says, Can you crit critique the sideboard? I'll check it out after we're done uh, with this this uh set of games. But yeah, thanks for the thanks for the list. Right. Let's let's lead off with Soren. Everyone loves Soren. Everybody loves Soren. Oops. 
All right, let's go one, two. Oh, wait. Can't do that with those colors. Let's see. White, whatever, blue. Deputy detention, two triggers. Oof. Nice. Value. Nice. Yeah, all the value. All right. Yeah, you got me. Ooh, another noble hierarch as well. All right, bounce the carving. Oh, cards. More cards. I like cards. Yeah. Uh, I guess we're just gonna have to blow the world up. Nope. Let's fetch and shock a breeding pool, and let's negate that. Ah, uh, no. I brought in negates from the sideboard. My my sideboard is very simple and janky, but it's just it was kind of a throw together for generally what there was in the top ten. No, that seems reasonable. Um. Hmm. I did not meta deck. I did. I didn't not meta game at all. Is it, I was basically trying to uh, test this against um, actual modern decks, and that's not. It was. It was fine. We did okay. <laughs> it wasn't wasn't fantastic. Let's get in oh, for so many cards. the the four power beatdowns. Triple exalted. Yep. Okay. I don't know how to stack this. Let me see. Let's see if it stacks us correctly. I want to stack Conjurer's Closet f first. Oh no 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 no. Um. I don't think you can. I think Conjurer's Closet has already triggered. No, so stack you're... stack Venzer first. I can't. Doesn't let me. All right. Yeah. While well, I'm blinking, Noble. <laughs> you st oh god, you get so many cards anyway. How does that not work? I wanted to bring Carvin back in first and then bounce it with the the Conjurer's. Uh, so they're both triggering at the end step. Uh, Venser will trigger, and then Conjurer's Closet also triggers. But to put the abilities on the stack, you have to have. Yeah, I have, have to, to target. Targeting. Yeah. Uh, did I just skip through my? I did. Uh, let's not um, skip through any more phases there. Um, <laughs> that would be bad. Oh, do I get this down? Ethereal. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm. I'm thinking ethereal. Basically, I think it's it's not great, but it does kill all of your noble hierarchs and. Now I can't. Now I can't attack anymore. Um. <laughs> all right. Let me see. Uh. All right. Let's throw out a second Conjurer's <laughs> Closet. And let's throw out a... Oh, wait. No, no, no. I can't throw out a bird. Nope. All right. I shocked for no reason. Oh, wait. <laughs> I can I can also blink with Venzer. No, I'm not going to. I'm not going to. Um, do I have to target? Oh, no. I have to. All right. Whatever. Conjurer's Closet. Bounce carry added. Bounce carry... Oh, I can't. It's not going to let me. I know it's not going to let me. It's going to fizzle. All right, I'm screwing myself yep. here. The deck has flaws. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to say so many flaws. It's it's still it's still got Panamonicon out, and it's still very terrifying. Very terrifying. Uh, I mean, I think now, what do we want to do? I'm just looting for Octopus and Perforos. It's all I'm doing. <laughs> I think I think I have to do this because you are drawing way too many cards. Okay, that resolves. Slightly too many cards, I'm afraid. We're going to bounce a planes once this resolves. And I think we just passed the turn. Alright, come on, octopus, octopus! Gimme. <laughs> octopus on nope. the top. That would be really terrifying. Uh, colors. There we go. Uh, Got another one. And this time we're hitting the two good things. Yeah. Yeah, that hurts. That does hurt. Alright, let's throw out another one of these. So many cards. So much, so much value. So much value. Alright, now I could throw out the birds. And there's my red. Let's tick up Soren on, or tick up Venzer, and end the turn. Draw some more cards. I guess I'm flickering a bird. <laughs> kind of, I'm kind of happy I've kept you down to this few, uh, this few triggers. Like, and yeah, just to be fair, like, you've drawn way more cards than I have. 
<laughs> I'm already halfway oh. through my deck. Oh, hi. Uh... Sure. <laughs> this is probably not... Probably not the right thing to do. I think it is. You get your stuff back. Yeah, I, I know, but I still don't... No, you still don't just... untap? Yeah, I still don't untap from the last time. All right, let's see how much sure. mana... All right, let's go. Let's have some fun. Get an island. Well. One, two, three, four. Panharmonicon, number two. <laughs> and then let's throw yeah. out the good old Octo and get a billion oh dudes. How many dudes is this? Yep. Yep. <laughs> that's let's... a lot of. That's a lot of illusions. Oh, I shouldn't have bounced with Benzer. Now I have to kill some of my tokens. Yeah, I have to I sack one. I don't know how we deal with this. It's going to be tricky. Especially with zero... Yeah. I mean, zero they, lands this turn. They do nothing. They're just they're just meat bags for now. Until I get the Perforos. Well, that's the swamp. I mean, okay. <laughs> Uh, I guess we... I don't even know what we do here. I, I think at this point it's just pretty much bad news for us. Um, yeah. That's the term. Can't do anything. Hmm. Alright, let's 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 start by drawing a trillion cards. Oh, I have Gaviny Township! Oh, I can start pumping up the dudes. Oh jeez! Yeah. I want to win with uh, Perforos though. Didn't see that. <laughs> oh, there, there he is. There he is. Red, whatever. Big, that big Daddy Perforos. Yeah. Yep. Flicker with Venzer. And. Oh, uh, okay. I'm a lot. I'm a lot happier about that. I mean, I say, I say, I'm a lot happier about that. We are about to take a billion damage, so probably bad. I would guess. Oh yeah, it's over. We just go to the end step. Yeah. Alright. Yield through this turn. GG's. I want these triggers on the stack. I mean, of all the ways to die in modern, this is probably the one best. Of my favorites. So Octo yeah. Bounce! GG's. Marin is the winner. <laughs> awesome. Sick. Congratulations. Alright, so yeah, uh, I mean, we've obviously seen which cards we all got. Um, our mine was the uh, the Ethereal Absolution, which was right, ranked, I think, number one of the the sleeper cards for Ravnica Allegiance. I, I think the I think Mesmerizing Benthid was like the last, like it was like ten. That's right, yeah. I think it was tenth, yeah. So I, I really like the Benthid. I, I, it's it's such a neat um, such a neat card, but I, I've not seen it anywhere. Like I don't know what deck it particularly would do. Well, in I mean, yeah, I haven't even it seen it in EDH. Uh, right, yeah, I know. I, I mean, I don't play a huge amount of EDH, but yeah, I've, I haven't seen it. I just haven't seen it anywhere. And you, you would think that. I mean, it's not like it's a jank mythic. It, it feels like it's actually not terrible. Um, uh, it's in, in it's the right really deck, so. it's really good at keeping you alive. That's what it does a really good job at. The problem is yeah, there's so I much al better alternatives. Like I'd, in any other format, I'd rather just run like Aether Eyes or Aether Spouts to deal with creatures rather than a Benthid. Yeah, yeah, I guess I, I guess that makes sense. All right, awesome. And uh, yeah, obviously you're running Benthid. So um, did we see any? Was there anything in your deck that we didn't see that was? Uh, nope. I think that was the entire deck. I had a one of Reflector Mage that I sideboarded out. <laughs> that was the only other thing. Nice. We were we were running one Elish Nord, uh, just as oh man, back, back, back up Ethereal Absolution. Uh, I think our deck could have done it with a bit more ramp uh, in general. Um, we had a we had a number of like wraths to sort of keep us alive, um, but yeah, not quite as many as we needed apparently. <laughs> so uh, yeah, you know, we, I think maybe with a bit more tuning, a bit more a bit more acceleration, we might have got uh, Ethereal Absolution out a little earlier. That would have helped, but. No, it's it was it was a hard matchup, but I mean, I, we we both won games, so you know. But uh, yeah, mesmerizing method takes it down. So uh, there's awesome. uh, let's uh, let's do this. So 
Uh, if you were to build my deck, if you were to build around Mesmerizing Method, what would it be? And if I were to build around Ethereal Absolution, what would it be? I think, honestly, I would do an Esper Zer to do what I just talked about in Commander, like uh, fetch out Copy Enchantment, Copy Ethereal Absolution, and just try to like run Clever Impersonator, because uh, it copies oh, yeah. a non-land permanent, and just keep copying Ethereal Absolution as many times as I can. That's what I would have done. Right. So if you had to build uh, around Mesmerizing Benthid, what would it be? If I build around Mesmerizing Benthid, I mean, I, I kind of have already on on my channel before, which was, um, I, I did Phantasmal Image, and it was basically Illusions, and uh, it, it, it worked reasonably well. It, it wasn't fantastic, but, um, you know, it, it was good fun. It was good fun, especially when, it was a good feeling when you, you get Benthid down and then immediately uh, Phantasmal Image, and it's just, he, like, Phantasmal Image just keeps itself alive at that point. The uh, the built-in hex proof, as it were. And that's all I was going for. It's like, I I just wanted to have a the cool thing. It's like it's it, it is itself an illusion. Therefore, always going to have hex proof. That's 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 the moment I was living for. Yes. But I think uh, the Panamonicon build that you did, uh, yeah, yeah. No, I think that that seems really good. Um, yeah, because like I couldn't think of any other creature I'd rather run in this scenario than Mesmerizing Benthid. That's why I really like this build. Because I wouldn't have ran like Captain of the Watch or like if for the Hinterland Hermit was was modern legal, I I don't think I'd run that over Benthid. Because the Benthid has hexproof, so it's immune to your removal, so I can just do whatever I want with it. Um that, that's, that's actually quite a, a valuable point, isn't it? Because yeah. a lot a lot of these um flickery strategies will die to spot removal. So yeah. Yeah, I think that's 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 a really good point. Um, another thing, I wanted to try Illusion Tribal, but it's just I felt like five drop for Illusion Tribal was a little bit too clunky because usually all the illusions are like <laughs> two and three drops, and even one drops like Phantasmal Bear and Hyper Aggro, and I thought the Benthid would be a little bit too slow. Um, anyways, I think I'm done talking about my deck. Is there anything else to talk about before we wrap up the video? No, I think that's uh, that's all good for me. All right, guys, well, be sure to check out uh, our other perspectives. Like, go check out his perspective on his channel. The link is down below to his video, and I'm pretty sure my the link to my perspective will be in his. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, so thank you very much for watching. Hit that like button if you enjoyed. And, um, yeah, anything else? Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see you next time. Uh, yeah, we'll probably do another one of these uh, next week, if not the following week. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you sub to both of our channels so that you don't miss out. And uh, catch you next time. Peace. Cheers all.